Well, hi everyone. We got 24 hours left as far as the trade deadline goes, and there's been a lot of moves today and also in the last couple days. I feel like there was just too much that was going to happen, too much chaos. I couldn't keep up with too much of the news, so we're going to review what's happened so far today and maybe what's going to possibly happen in the next 24 hours. Let's get into it. This one is in the air, out toward fairly deep left. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to Touch the Basics Podcast. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and joining the family. We are growing rapidly and I love it and I love you. So just remember that. I will say this again, that I love you. Starting off just because the Mariners are my team and I bet you will all probably want to hear about the Yankees. We'll get to it. Mariners made a trade earlier this week, which I already made a video on with Randy Rosarena. Probably the biggest trade so far, aside from who we're going to get to in a little bit. Today, I would say about 45 minutes ago, they traded for Justin Turner, the Blue Jays third baseman slash first baseman who is definitely going to help the Mariners. Now, before we get into anything, I just want to say for those on Twitter saying like, uh, he's not that much of an upgrade. Uh, we could have done better. Why did they do that? I will explain why they did it and also why I think this might be a strategy that Jerry's putting the Mariners into a good position come 2025. Justin Turner so far this year is batting a 254 and he is slugging a 371, which does not sound too great, but he does have an OPS plus of 106. His OPS is a 720 so that's really good it's a bat that is dependable and from what it sounds like he's pretty excited to actually get here to seattle daniel kramer the reporter uh put out a quote that justin said to him he says they're in a dog fight it will be exciting to go out and be part of it to help them make the playoff run i know the mariners haven't won a division in quite some time so i'm hoping i can be a piece that helps with that i think he's a good team player he's a great clubhouse addition so besides all the numbers and stuff and people wanting vlad and wanting like luis robert and one Wanting all these other guys that are big names and Brian Mount Cancel. So the straight up bottom line is the fact that they just like aren't probably available. I, I don't know how else to put it to you guys. Some guys are just not available no matter how many prospects you dangle in front. And given what we've seen so far from Jerry as far as these trades go, we haven't really given up anybody. Aiden Smith was our number 12 overall and that's the highest the Mariners have gone to the farm system as far as acquiring people. Now trading Justin Turner, we only gave up one guy who is an Aquasock, which is high a ball and that was rj shrek nobody probably knows who he is i don't know if he's ranked i wasn't able to see that but he's down in single a performing at 250 batting average slugging 444 and ops of 836 so pretty good for the single a level this is definitely an investment piece for the blue jays going forward he's a left fielder so it's going to help him in the outfield since they are kind of sparse in outfielders right now it's for the mariners to get back a guy he's a rental we didn't have to give up much the thing is the mariners are eating his contract so please keep in mind that the mariners are now taking taking over $4,263,412, which is what's left on his two months. That kind of equates out to Ty France leaving, who has just been acquired by the Reds just before this trade happened. The problem with that is the Reds took the trade deal, but there was also cash considerations on the Mariners side. This stuff just came out, so I wanted to share it with you. So the Reds will be paying $2,258,350 for his contract, while the Mariners are retaining salary of $4,516,650. <sighs> That's a lot of numbers. The Mariners may possibly, and I'm saying this on the caution side because we really have no idea what the Mariner budget is. This might be it as far as the trade deadline goes. There's 24 hours left and Luis Robert hasn't been moved. Ryan Mountcastle hasn't been moved anywhere. Wade Jr. hasn't gone anywhere. In fact, the Giants, I don't think have made any deals as far as I'm concerned. I might be wrong on that, but it's so insignificant that I'm not really paying attention. So with Justin Turner batting a 254, slugging a 371 with an OPS of 720. If you compare that to Ty France, who was batting a 225 with a 350 slugging percentage, 662 OPS and only a 94 OPS plus. Are we making an upgrade there? Yeah. Yeah, slightly but since Ty France is gone what we're working with with Tyler Locklear is a 159 batting average slugging 318 with an OPS of 547 his OPS plus is a 59 we absolutely fixed our first base 1000% I don't want to take away from it but granted compared to Ty France it's not a huge upgrade but since Ty France was, was DFA'd and now he's with the Reds we were looking at a horrible first base position I don't want to drag on Tyler Locklear too much I just don't think he 
he's ready for the MLB at this point. In other news, one of the biggest trades that happened so far today that's pretty insane, it involves the Cardinals, the Dodgers, and the White Sox. Now, the reason why I say the White Sox probably aren't selling Crochet and Robert Jr., it sounds like they're probably gonna hang on to him unless Getz wants to do something at the very last second. The Cardinals acquire starting pitcher Fetty and Tommy Pham, who's a rental for the rest of this year, while the Dodgers acquire Edmund, Tommy Edmund, and Kopech, who is the relief pitcher slash closer for the White Sox with a three-way deal. Now, Eric Fetty is going to the Cardinals. Tommy Pham will go as well. Also, the Cardinals will get a player to be named later or cash from the Dodgers and cash from the White Sox. So the Cardinals, I feel like, are winning this trade already. And then the Dodgers are going to get Michael Kopech and then Tommy Edmond from the Cardinals and a right-hander, Oliver Gonzalez from the Cardinals. Now, the White Sox, with all of that going away, they're one of their starting pitchers, one of their best hitting outfielders, best closer, and the White Sox are going to be receiving outfielder Miguel Vargas, who I actually assumed he was going to get sent away by the Dodgers, and then also minor league infielder Alexander Albertus and Jarrell Perez. I might be saying his name wrong. Uh, there will also be a player to be mentioned later or cash from the Dodgers going to the White Sox. So you ask me, I mean, Tommy Edmond, I guess they're desperate for a middle infielder at this point, given the injuries and then also bets being out, but he is a top ranked player in the MLB. He's just been plagued by injuries. So very odd situation. If you're a Dodger fan, I probably wouldn't be too happy to see this. I mean, yeah, it's nice to get Michael Kopech, but one guy for your bullpen help is not exactly what I would expect. And then Tommy Edmond being injured the entire year this year, how much is he going to contribute to the Dodgers moving forward? Cardinals made a huge upgrade. So this I think will put them in a very good position. They now have a rotation arm who has been very dominant and then also a good bat in left field if they decide to play Tommy Pham or use him as a designated hitter. I don't know how they're going to go about fitting Tommy Pham into that lineup or even on the field, but he is going to be a bat I think helps the Cardinals. He's been moved everywhere for the last couple of years. This might be a good home for him to where he has a playoff opportunity. Now, before we get to Jazz going to the Yankees, as you guys already know, it's probably the biggest news currently in the last couple of days. Jack Flaherty has been scratched from the start tonight. This would be the starting pitcher, probably one of the best pitchers around for the Tigers, pitching a 2.95 ERA in 18 starts this year. He has a 32% K rate, which ranks him fifth in the all of MLB, and he has a $14 million deal. Whew, that's a lot to cover. So why is he not playing? Probably because he's getting traded. The Yankees have been going after him hardcore, and he's been rumored to be discussed with the Yankees for like the past week. Now with 24 hours left, there has been a release put out that Nestor Cortez would be up for trade if they complete the deal with Jack Flaherty. So I'm thinking probably by the time I release this video, the deals are either done or it fell through. So it's one of the two, which means they'll be in a rush to move Nestor Cortez. And I don't know exactly which teams are going to be looking for a pitcher at this point, especially since Cortez has been pretty terrible the last few games, his last few starts. Who would want to get Get Nestor Cortez and then also on top of that will they be able to pull off the deal with Jack Flaherty if that's the case I mean it would be super exciting for Yankee fans because they just grabbed Jazz Chisholm yes finally we're getting into Jazz Chisholm Jazz is now a Yankee wearing the number 13 to take over A-Rod's number which I thought was a bit a bit odd nobody's been better than him in Miami he's been the superstar unless you want to argue Luis Arise now he is going to a team where he has the potential to American League MVPs for this year and he's going to be filling in a role what initially was going to be second base but after some comments made by Glaber Torres that were not too much in favor of the idea of playing third base. It was seen today before the game to be taking ground balls over at third base. So you're looking at Glaber Torres at second, Anthony Volpe at short, and Jazz Chisholm at third base, which is a position from what I can understand he's never played professionally. And so that will keep the current outfield as his with Soto in right, Judge in center, and then Verdugo in left. Jazz Chisholm is batting a 248 with the slugging percentage of 404. He has 100 OPS plus, so he's actually league average when it comes to his OPS at 726, but he has 50 RBIs and 23 stolen bases. I think that was one of the keys. He's got some speed to a very slow team. This is huge for the Yankees. It's a big addition. I don't think anybody was expecting it. I was more expecting Robert Jr. probably going there, but from what I can tell, 
White Sox aren't letting go of their big boy and they also aren't letting go of Crochet. Maybe this is going to be now moved to a future offseason deal. Now before you go, I wanted to circle back to the Mariners and I wanted to explain something to you guys because I know I hinted towards it and you're still here. As far as the trade going for Ty France, he had two more years of club control not doing too well. So him being DFA'd, luckily for us, he got picked up by the Rays. We had to throw a little cash out there for the rest of this year, but next year it will be free of his contract. That opened up a spot for first base and a little bit of money for us to be able to afford somebody else. Well, that somebody else happened to be Justin Turner. Now he is only one year. He's a rental. We only have him for a couple months. And in those couple of months, moving into the next season, that'll open up all the money we were going to spend on Ty France, who was not going to be performing very well. And getting rid of him was going to be a hard enough task as is going into 2025 if he keeps up his numbers that he already has. This, as I think, is a long-term strategy to offset, remove a contract, and then bring in a better bat. Strategically, I think this was very smart by the Mariners, and I think you as a Mariner fan, if you were watching this, should be appreciative and be very happy that we got Justin Turner, even though he's a rental, because now we freed up money for 2025 to dig in on a free agent, possibly sign one of the many first basemen that are silver slugger level bats. That could take us to the playoffs next season, especially now that we have control over Julio, Randy Rosarena. We still have Blanco, who seems to be heating up, and that would make it way easier for the Mariners to just solely focus on a first baseman and maybe a third baseman during the offseason. Let me know you guys' thoughts in the comments. Maybe I missed something. Is there a trade that you thought was bigger and more important? It looks like the Rangers have been selling. They got rid of uh, Lorenzen, but he hasn't been putting up the best numbers, so I figured I'd just skim right over that. Let's just focus on the, uh, the biggest deals. If you made it this far, give it a like. Leave a comment down below what you guys think. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.